This is 90.3 KEXP and worldwide at KEXP.org. I'm Stevie Zoom. Thanks for tuning in. We are ready for some live music in our studios. We want to welcome the duo Bob Moses. We have Jimmy and Tom. Thank you guys for being here this afternoon. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. It's great that you're here. You ready for a couple of songs? We are, man. We cool. are. You can go right ahead. All right. This one's called Like It or Not.
It's gotta mean something, it's gotta mean something to you You gotta keep pushing, you gotta keep pushing through It's gotta mean something, it's gotta mean something to you You gotta keep pushing, you gotta keep pushing through Gotta mean something to you Tear me up. Let me know when you're ready, Tom.
started with a simple conversation It was on the making, man She was talking me up on that Kept asking if I was only faking She was there for the taking Showing me that she was on that She told me she lived just around the corner I wanted to know her, yeah She was making me lose my mind I didn't know quite what I was chasing She had my heart racing All it took was just one night You're listening to live music from Bob Moses here at 90.3 KEXP. Tearing Me Up is the song right there. And the first one, Like It or Not, both of those songs on the uh, album Days Gone By that came out this past year on the Domino label. Domino also released uh, this last year an album All in All by Bob Moses, which uh, mostly had songs from some previous EPs that were uh, now out of print. Again, we have Tom and we have Jimmy here. They are Bob Moses. Again, thank you guys for being here. Thanks for having us, man. You guys are neighbors of ours, Vancouver, BC. You bet, man. Yeah, we drove down this morning. Yeah. However, I understand that musically you guys didn't really come together. I mean, you kind of knew each other in Vancouver, but it wasn't until both of you had different uh, avenues that took you to New York. 
Yeah. And we then met kind, of, kind we, of things went from there? Yeah. We met up in New York. Uh, we ran into, into each other in a Lowe's parking lot um, in a rather shady neighborhood of Brooklyn. And uh, the rest is history, as they say. As one does when Canadians find each other, they just flock, you know? So it was like, hey, what are you doing here? Yeah. In this sketchy part of Brooklyn. So it was great. Now, you guys had both had some uh, bands and musical things happening in Vancouver, but uh, you guys got together in New York. How much of the sound that you have now came out of your previous musical experiences, different bands? Well, I think everything kind of inspires you, you know what? No matter, regardless, I think you just kind of go on this continuing journey of finding your sound and stuff. And, you know, I was doing electronic music and Tom was doing singer-songwriter stuff. And... I guess what we do now is kind of a mix of both of the worlds, but we really like honed it in New York. Like we were going to like warehouse parties and really listening to like cool up and coming producers and sounds. So I think it was a bit of the past mixed with the, what we were doing together in New York that kind of formed the whole thing. Yeah, there's a, yeah, certainly there's an electronic sound to what you're doing, obviously, but as you mentioned, there's just lots of different musical uh, influences that are happening, which kind of creates some really nice songs. And then the uh, Tom with your vocal delivery to these kind of makes it uh, a really nice listening experience. Thanks. Yeah, we both like grew up listening to a lot of, I think all our favorite bands were sort of groups like Depeche Mode and Massive Attack and Radiohead, and groups that kind of, and you know, even like later Beatles stuff they were doing with like they, they wrote great songs, but they pushed the envelope in the studio and we came together in New York around these warehouse parties, like Jimmy was saying, which was kind of pushing, bringing the Berlin sort of underground electronic scene over the water and kind of starting it there and that's how we kind of that's what we got inspired around together and we our goal was always from the beginning to kind of combine that sound with somehow with like great songs which is what we've like probably what we'll be doing till we die I guess yeah <laughs> yeah a, a nice mix of so uh, songwriting with electronic sounds and it's coming together pretty nicely it's kind of cool to listen to the uh, the early ones to the present album and you can kind of really hear that development yeah. yeah, I mean, we also, you know, our earlier stuff was made very sort of instantly for um, the party scene we were in in New York. We wanted things that, like, we could mix together in DJ sets and that a DJ would play. So we, we, were, we were more pointed in sort of being able to make tracks that, I think the songwriting has kind of come out more because what we started in, we were sure, weren't really sure how to write in that style with keeping a club feel, you know, so... Um, yeah, it's been a it's been a fun journey, and we look forward to continuing. Yeah, now uh, most bands here in the U.S., especially newer bands, I think, kind of get some TV exposure through the late night shows. However, last week you guys were on the Ellen Show. Yes, daytime. Yeah, <laughs> you went straight to daytime. We did straight to daytime. How did that come about? I understand that Ellen heard uh, Terry me turn you up on the um on the radio and um, yeah. contacted you. Yeah, she said she told us she was listening to Sirius XMU in her car and um, they were playing us on there and she said she heard the song and like got the record and was like I have to have these guys on the show and we were in Chile South America at the time and we were planning to come back to New York and then do some writing go to Vancouver and our manager says hey they want you to play the Ellen show and we thought it was a prank we were like we were like you mean she it's her birthday so you want us to play her birthday party like a private party because we're used to doing that you know and he was like, no, the show. And then there was some confusion. We were in, we were in Brazil on yeah. our, or something in a car. Yeah. And we were like, you know, kind of figuring out if he was having, our, having a joke or for about half an hour. And then we said, you have to fly there straight after Chile so you won't really be sleeping for the next three days. And we were like, all right. Yeah. And it was great. Like, she's awesome. She's just super cool. And everyone that works for her is awesome. And it was just such a great experience. And, like, we felt so out of place. It was like, you know, Jack Black was there and he gave me some advice. Just like, you know, he's such a cool dude. So it couldn't have been, like, a more inviting, welcoming place to, to get your first kind of daytime TV thing. So for that, we're super grateful, you know? Yeah, and she was super, uh, like, she wasn't, she was like, it's okay. Like, she was, good. she was super real, you know? So she was kind of a good coach. I don't know all the, what the other hosts are like, but she was very sort of like almost motherly about it. Like, you guys will you'd be fine. You can do it. You know, and we felt instantly at ease. So, I'm sure that when you first heard Ellen Show contacted you, that you had several questions of like, is, is this on the level? Yeah. 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 yeah that's what we, we had for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's great, too, that you got to meet Jack Black. Yeah. Yeah. We, we grew up watching Nacho Libre, so we were... Uh, 
Well, I mean, we were already grown up when it came out, but I mean, we we have a lot of jokes. We quote Jack Black a lot almost on, every day. on tour to stay amused. So it was nice to. I and actually, the yeah, it was a we fitting, done, we thing done for this, having there for sure. Yeah, we had done this thing in Mexico, in this luchador ring, like the week before, and then so it was kind of serendipitous in that way. Yeah, way. it all tied together. Great. Now you have some upcoming shows in March. You're going to Europe. We are. Uh, we're basically. I think we're doing like we're playing almost every day with one day off in Europe, and we're going like you know, pretty much. We're running the gamut, doing trying to cover everywhere. So we did a couple dates in the in November, and uh, now we're going back and trying to finish the rest of them off. So and Europe's awesome, man. So we're super excited for that. And then after that, you return in April, and I see you have a several California shows, including uh, both weekends of Coachella. Yeah, we're doing a couple. We're doing the El Rey Theater and a couple other things. We're opening for Mike Snow and some other people. Underworld, yeah. <laughs> around that, and um, we're going in. In Europe, we do London and Dublin, and I don't remember all the places because it's a lot. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So some really nice uh, things happening here uh, as this year gets gone. Yeah, man, we're so stoked. All right. Days Gone By is the album. Bob Moses, you ready for a couple more? Yeah, let's yeah, do definitely. it, man. All right, this one's called Before I Fall. So now 
All right, next one's called Touch and Go.
Live music here on 90.3 KEXP from Bob Moses. Those last two songs, Before I Fall and Touch and Go. And uh, all four of the songs on the album, Days Gone By, that was released through the Domino label. Uh, Jimmy and Tom, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for having us, man. Uh, Again, they're going to be in uh, Europe in March and California in April, including Coachella. So all the best on all the upcoming shows. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for being here. And a big thank you to our engineer, Kevin Suggs, 90.3 KEXP, Seattle. Awesome.